Welcome back, everybody, to the Barbells and Trails podcast. Whoop, whoop. We're your hosts, Brett and Riley, back with today's episode, number 75. And we are talking about Nuclear Now. Ooh. Documentary developed yep. and directed by Oliver Stone. I kind of forced you into this. You kind of did. I mentioned it to you a while ago, but we, we decided to just watch it together last yeah, night. Yeah, it was a late night. It was. It ended up being longer than I expected. It's like, it's like an 45? hour and 45 minutes. So a, a de- decently lengthy documentary. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it basically was all about nuclear power and nuclear energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't really talk much after. What was your thoughts on it, honestly? I mean, so... Because, I mean, I just mean, from observing you, I could tell going into it... You I were, definitely had my speculations. You, you had speculations i think you also hold held like almost nuclear energy stereotyping which i i i did in the Mm. past too but because i've already heard him and other people talk i was already aware of some stuff Mm -hmm. and so i could see kind of as we actually got further into the documentary you were like wait a second (laughs) well like he did start it off with like so this is how we got created and then, you know, he did, like, the evolution part. And yeah. And, like, me being raised as a Christian, I was like, eh, I kind of don't agree with that. Yeah. But. I, I think I his mean, point was just saying that, like, I think his statement in that was more, not that, but more, like, radiation has been with us from the yeah, very beginning. Yeah. I, I, like, it's a part of right. the cosmos. It, right. It's everywhere. Oh, exactly. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of what his point was at the beginning. But, um. But yeah, like it was very interesting. The, yeah, the first half is very depressing because it talks about everything in the past. Yeah, um, protests. It seems very mm-hmm. bleak, and I feel the last like just section, like because that's the part I had watched so far because I had watched it yeah. partially before. I never even got to the other end. Yeah, I so feel the like the last first section, half, I was like, "This is amazing." I mean, the first half was like informational. It's historical it was, facts. Yeah, it was like in history. Yes, past history, and I feel like just like not a lot of people actually knew. No, exactly. But it, what? Yeah, because there was, was a lot of propaganda yeah. at the time. Yeah. So like, and so like, our parents' generation, or especially our grandparents' generation, mm-hmm. probably look at nuclear energy in a very negative light. Like, I've never even talked about it yeah. with my grandparents. I've never. Talked I, to I, I'd be parents. curious. I'd be curious to be like, so what do you guys actually think of this? So I guess we should actually give some context to the documentary. It's called Nuclear Now. Um, basically he is going over the history, hopefully the future of nuclear energy and the effects it could have globally for climate change and Mm -hmm. and the injury, 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 energy crisis we kind of have, but that's going to keep growing Mm -hmm. and that we didn't know it for a long time. Well, we did, but it got basically put on the sidelines that we had the solution basically this whole time. Right. And because of a bunch of different circumstances, it kind of got put in the limelight Mm -hmm. and no one. It was just like on that line that just like was like in the middle. It was just like this could be good, but also could be really bad. So I brought it. I feel like half the world was just like, this is probably a terrible idea. So they just put it to the side. Yeah. And and like you said, it's like in the 50s, though, like it was looked at amazingly. And then just from a couple events, it. Mm -hmm. Which Between I that and then lobbying. I think that was right. a big thing. So I think this has something to do kind of with how we talked on the last episode, a little bit of, like, the medical uh, industry. Yeah. Basically having a lack of information. Yeah. I think it's very similar to the public having a lack of true information on right. this. They only get, like, the headlines. They get the right. the stuff that's put in the media, the stuff that's Just in the Just what the books. news say, basically. Yes. So. And, and basically – Something I didn't know until first listening to him and watching that and getting a lot of information. You would think that the amount of n- nuclear reactors, nuclear energy, there would be a lot more casualties in the industry. Yeah. I mean, surprisingly, when they kept showing that, the it's the bar least and yeah, graph, I was just like, well, that's interesting because I was told that just million, millions of millions of people just like died. Yeah. Of like, and I think a lot of people thought that, even yeah. of like Chernobyl. But in yeah. all reality, when, when it actually came to the accident, only 50 people died. Yeah. And it was basically first responders that had no safety gear mm-hmm. that were initially sent in to put out the fires 
to deal with the explosion to deal with that mm -hmm. and other than that the other things like he was talking about i re-listened to the podcast that he was on rogan today um just to try getting more information in his conversation about the documentary and that some people actually estimate that the amount of people that possibly got cancer from the event might be lower than they estimated because some of these people could have ended up with cancer anyways it might have just slightly yeah. risen the risks from it and even the radiation that did get spread across europe for a while was actually very low levels and it was in the atmosphere it wasn't necessarily affecting like big metropolitan areas it just yeah. it was low level radiation and i think that's something i never realized until he actually mentioned it today there is a difference between nuclear power that radiation compared to a nuclear bomb because yeah, nuclear yeah. bombs are yeah. basically um oh what's a word like it's basically weaponized but it's there's a specific word for it but they actually make it basically more radioactive to cause yeah. that reaction so the nat the more i guess natural form that's used for nuclear energy the levels of radiation that it naturally gives off is also way lower than i think yeah. anybody knew i, I didn't know that. i didn't know i was no. like holy crap and then when it started getting into further into the documentary of how like how smaller they can make yeah the reactors yes yeah that was and then, that like, was the batteries that was too. amazing i was like that was what the heck <laughs> that was crazy it was the the like we said the the first half is almost very depressing showing the bleak like past of nuclear energy right. and all the bad stuff has basically come up from it and by the end of it they kind of get into hopefully the more optimistic mm -hmm. future of what is possible with nuclear yeah. energy the industry's hopefully growing and that's the plan and all this stuff but like one of the first facts that i had heard from him and and seen initially what which was outstanding like i, I knew we had nuclear powered subs i knew we had nuclear powered um aircraft carriers that kind of stuff yeah. I, I knew that mm -hmm. but I didn't realize that basically the the size of the the cells that they use for the nuclear subs is literally like the size of your pinky finger. It costs yeah. a couple dollars to produce, mm -hmm. and it produces the same amount of power as one ton of coal, yeah. which would cost hundreds of dollars. Yeah, and just that fact alone is quite impressive. It's it, just insane. And it's something I, I never totally knew. Yeah. And then uh, also, like, one of the big issues is people is always worried about, like, well, what are you going to do with, like, nuclear waste and storage? And then finding out that if you took what all of it? the was it nuclear France waste. The oh. Figure that out? Well, yes. But yeah. basically, I didn't know this, but it's typical for nuclear waste to sit in some form of water for, mm -hmm. like, the first year or two. Yeah. To basically deal with the excess radiation that emits like shortly yeah. after use yeah. but it's like after that it slowly like over time one it takes a long time for it to degrade but as it degrades it becomes less radioactive mm -hmm. like over time so it exponentially becomes weaker radiation yeah that's which why i never I, thought about i was that's always why like I've, oh it's always radioactive that's why no, when they was getting into like bearing all of the all of the reactors yeah like hundreds and thousands of feet just below yeah just Makes sense. Yeah, they just keep it out. It can't get into the supply of yeah. water, exactly. and even if it gets into water, uh, because water and concrete basically stop radiation so well, it's not even necessarily dangerous. It's not as dangerous as like the old factories in the Hudson dumping mm -hmm. chemicals right. from paint factories yeah. that was literally causing people to get cancer. It's mm -hmm. not the same. It's not the same result that you would think of. But everybody assumes that. But it's like honestly, most of the like bad pollution that people get isn't from radiation stuff yeah. it's all from chemicals it's from other stuff from other that's factories like, in the past that's when um that tsunami hit yeah that uh, one was what was uh, it fukushima yeah well, so i forget how many injuries it actually was but so i think from the tsunami it was like yeah, 15 to 20 000 yeah, but casualties <clears throat> i think but there was zero zero yeah, yeah that's what i mean radiation. i was trying to get to but yeah. i feel like the headline was probably like this many people died of the and I remember and I reacted, when it but the thing is the water yeah you probably stopped most of the the radiation like, radiation yeah. I just lost my train of thought but well, yeah, it's insane was, yeah I, once they got into it I was like you know actually yeah that's right I mean, water I, that would have happened that. when I was 10 
Yeah. So, like, I remember the tsunamis. I remember that was, like, some of the earliest YouTube videos I remember watching where someone was in a building and you just see the water surge coming up mm -hmm. and coming over these seawalls. And it is – it was ridiculous to watch. And, yeah. and, and then knowing that was also linked to Fukushima, like, it seemed like a catastrophe. People thought it was, like, another Chernobyl, but it wasn't at all. Yeah. Basically, the whole issue was the reactor overheated because – water got it was almost bad preparation for some reason they put the generators in low water or yeah. low water a, a low point when yeah. they're already next to the coast and then the seawall was only like 10 foot high yeah once the water got into the it, generators it, yeah, and the generators, the just generators messed up then just everything went yeah it went south and yeah. so there's nothing to do in the, but the I reactor like, overheated yeah since you said there was like zero zero the, deaths yeah from from the radiation yeah. yeah most most of it was from the tsunami and earthquake yeah. Which and, makes sense. and the radiation that was released was low levels mm -hmm. that your body can deal with because yep. naturally like that was another thing that they talked about especially happening in the 60s as nuclear power kind of emerged the big oil companies basically tried to slander it and use propaganda to push the public away from mm -hmm. it because they knew it was possibly going to take billions hundreds of billions of dollars away from their industry exactly that's, kept up. that's when it was climbing like yeah they then, saw but, they saw the growth and then they the was 50s. like oh crap yeah this is going to like mess us up yeah, and then that's when everything went south for yeah i mean they so. they got papers wrote in new york times so yeah. that got out and they did a bunch of studies like they were saying in the 60s that any any amounts of radiation that enter your body can cause yeah. dramatic but effects and i didn't know this but you can get low level radiation from eating a banana it's the most radioactive mm, yeah food that we consume and i was like i didn't know that yeah, at all no. same mean, with flying same yeah. with all this stuff you actually get the most amount of radiation most people will consume is getting an x-ray or an mri in their body not mm -hmm. like in, in no, their I've lifetime had, that's the most i've had several yeah like that's actually the most yeah. the average person will probably get is yeah. from those devices mm -hmm. not from anything else yeah and so it's kind of crazy. Like even Three Mile Island, like that's the U.S. catastrophe. That's the only yeah. U.S. catastrophe we've ever had. And I've heard of it. I honestly didn't know a lot about it. And then them talking about it on the documentary and basically nothing happened. No one got hurt. Like yeah. it overreacted or it overheated, but the containment facility around it was built like it was and it did its job yeah. and it contained the reactor yeah. when it had the problem and overheated. Yeah. And See, I was so told the reactor basically got destroyed, yeah. but no radiation was leaked yeah. into the. See, I environment. was told like if the reactor blew up, it's just like a nuke. Yeah, that's what I was told like my whole life. So it was like, that's why I was so against it at first. Yeah, I was just like, and I think that's a lot of people. Yeah, because so. they they think nuclear and they think of the atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. They think of Hiroshima. They think of all these things. I mean, I still don't know like most of anything about, but the documentary did help. Yeah, it, it did. It educates a lot. And he was even talking about how, like, obviously this documentary is very positive, but him having issues even getting it viewed for, like, film festivals, getting stuff where people watched it. Like, some of the head people watched it, and they were like, I love it, but I'm not going to show it. We're not going to have it. And he was like, well, like, he tried going to Netflix. Netflix said, we don't want it. That's why it ended up on iTunes, Google Play, and, like, Amazon where you had to purchase it because mm -hmm. no streaming platform wanted to mess with it. Makes sense, I guess. Which, it kind of sucks because it's like, it limited its, I I guess, it limited the it's amount of people that audience. are going to be able to watch it. Yeah, yeah, limited the audience size. But I am honestly really glad I actually watched it after I finished yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, a little long. But yeah, that, but well, a lot honestly, of information. I mean, yes, the first half were slow. But, like, I was just like, oh, well, this is probably going to end soon. And then I saw there was, like, 45 minutes left. Yeah. And that's when it just like boosted. I was yeah. like, I just started learning so much stuff. I was like, holy crap, yeah, this I is know. insane. Yeah, so, I mean, basically, if you guys don't know, he talks about even something like we talked about. Casualties from industrial accidents from nuclear is minuscule compared to coal in particular. That's the worst one. Gas, um, solar, even wind. And I think yeah. it's estimated that over four four million people die annually from in general air pollution worldwide, but almost possibly a million people die from coal, basically. Yeah, Being I mean, yeah. in the industry, working in the industry, 
and let alone possibly living next to coal like power just plants. Coal mines, especially too. yeah, exactly that that as well. I just, and I've, it's I not probably that. as bad here yeah. in the U.S. Like we're okay. Like obviously we probably sh- still shouldn't be using coal, but like our like we're not. We have standards to keep the air pollution from getting bad. We're getting excess CO2, but we're not getting the pollutants in the air. Mm-hmm. Where like if you go to India or China, that's why the air quality in some of those places is just, terrible because they have Japan to rely too. Yeah, they, they have to rely on coal. Yeah, and coal's not going to last forever. It no, really is it? No, and it's it's a finite resource. And that was another thing that was so fascinating was he, which I wasn't expecting. The what was it? It was called the what do you say it was called like the rebirth reactor or something and it was the one in russia where basically they take it's basically a recycling reactor oh yeah so it takes the waste and they can still use basically the fuel cells they've already used re-energize it and keep using it for energy Mm -hmm. almost sustainably france to be honest that that one they do something but the one that actually has that the reactor that just completely recycles it that one was germany what France, I was very impressed by. I had no idea. What did they do again? They they're the most clean energy. Oh, that's right. In, they in had, the world. I didn't know this. Yeah, I had no idea that I basically like, almost a hundred percent of their energy is practically clean. Wasn't it, wasn't it like seventy or eighty percent? Seventy percent is made up from all all nuclear, mm-hmm. and I think they have like thirty plus reactors, and they built like twenty of them in fifteen years. That's insane. And. So I didn't know that one they had seventy percent of that, and then like the rest is hydro and some solar and wind and other stuff. So they basically are like probably the go to when it comes to their grid being the most clean. At least yeah. I I never knew it was I, that. I was I like no I, they didn't say anything about coal. Yeah. I think they had like one percent that was made up from like some gas, probably. so that would be like methane. But it's yeah. like compared to other countries, that is the most impressive yeah. grid formation I've ever heard of i i had no idea and i didn't know this but we still have the number one we're still number one in the world for the uh amount of nuclear nuclear reactors we have operational oh really yeah we have almost 90 something in the country hmm. and i think china's the closest behind us with like 74 yeah I, but when they were getting into China, building all the reactors that was so i found out more information about that you know how we were like oh how much do these cost Basically, China decided that they were going to put $150 billion to building nuclear reactors over the next 30 years, pretty much. And they're going to build 150 reactors. So, so it's, it's basically a b- billion dollars a reactor. Oh, but crap. once they're operational, there's low maintenance and clean energy for 80, 100 years with little maintenance or updating uh, over that time. Yeah. If nothing gets messed up. <laughs> yeah. But it's like if they standardize how they create them, they yeah. do all this. Like, that was the thing I didn't realize that the U.S. has lacked. We've never had a standardization of it. Right. It was always more, like, private companies and yeah. other power companies that would do it. And it wasn't like the U.S. government went through and was like, okay, this is going to be the industry standard. Mm-hmm. This is the reactor we're using at all these facilities and make it one uniform system. Yeah. Which other countries like Japan and Russia and China have yeah. done. And that was one of the things they were talking about that probably helps with that is their governmental system. The government can have more input over that kind of stuff. Yeah, that than was, us, it's more private industry. That's why I was like mind boggling when they were when he got uh, to that private company. Mm-hmm. They were getting into like how small they can make it. Yeah. So he said it was like how much footage, like the house. Um. He, oh, so so basically, a small that, reactor. It was like would a two-story house. One, one gigahertz, I think, which would power a thousand homes. Yeah, a thousand homes. Is that something along those lines? And it was just like he showed a picture or something. It was just like basically a V-shaped just house. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks just... like – I mean, it's definitely not a small building, but at the same time, right. it's like one large house yeah. pretty much. Basically, yeah. And it would be basically a company that's trying to develop miniature reactors that could be almost put up in – small rural areas where you don't have to have these giant reactors that right. power these whole areas obviously but if you're in a remote area instead of trying to build and bring in all this extra basically 
labor and materials, mm -hmm. you can just build these small reactors to right. power small communities. I feel like if they can get that running, yeah, that would be insane. Yeah, and that was another thing. Like, fifty over fifty private industries around the country are working on this. Yeah, like trying to develop new stuff. And, yeah, and it is kind of crazy. Like when he was getting into that, I was like, I was like, geez. Yeah, a lot of people are actually still into this. Yeah, like yeah. I, I had no idea. It really, it's just people been on the were working on this. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's like you never hear anything about no. this. And it's like I, I wish, and he even said it. It's like the main way to really get this going is having governmental insight to basically push it so mm -hmm. that's the only real way to get that industry like it needs to be yeah and part of that and one of the reasons why he made this documentary is trying to get more of the public to push it and if there's more of a public go-ahead yeah then maybe it would push politicians to actually work through mm -hmm. something like this because they were getting even into like tiktok mm -hmm. even that one mainstream yeah that one that yeah. one tiktoker yeah then she had a whole group and she was just like all about all about that i was like i didn't even know that like they were on platforms like that either it was just insane yeah no basically just a tiktoker based out of what, germany i think somewhere and, oh yeah you're right and she, something like that she basically is making tiktoks educating people yeah. of the true reality of nuclear power mm -hmm. and how it's really not that dangerous it's one of the cleanest yeah forms of energy it's cheap. It's very cheap yeah. in comparison to everything else. The amount of labor you need for it is low, mm -hmm. and it just there's really no pollution. Because what what did he say? Like the stat was that if you took all of the nuclear waste from the United States over the past sixty years, it would fill one Walmart. But if you tried doing the same thing with coal, it would be yeah. Uh, in, in insane yeah they did say one walmart yeah well one walmart that's yeah. it 60 I mean, years yeah of 90 different reactors running and that's all we have yeah that's insane and and i mean i mean i do get that they did stop for a while yeah they did shut everything basically down. they I but feel like I mean, they still. did. Luckily, we didn't end up like Germany, where we just destroyed all our reactors, yeah. and that's recent. That's what's wild, yeah. and that's something that's so crazy. But is, I think didn't they bring oh, them back? No, they didn't no, have. Ger Germany is. I thought they did. No, okay. Germany, which is kind of weird because they're typically like the, I guess, been known for really powerful high tech individuals when it comes to technology and advancements and stuff, and they've been really good in that field for decades. Yeah, they always have been. And then they decide to shut down all of the reactors. Right. Yeah. And then it's like now they have to rely on basically gas. That's like their main – that's their yeah. main pow power that they use now. And I know that that was a big topic when Russia and Ukraine war started was because they have to import most of their fuel for their energy from Russia because Russia has one of the largest supplies of methane gas Yeah. to Europe. And so it's like if they hadn't even shut off the reactors, they would also be less reliant on Russia and they wouldn't have to pay Russia billions of dollars right. to be able to power their country. Imagine Germany and Russia getting a war. That would not be We've good. already seen that twice. We don't I need mean, to see true, it again. But... We don't need to see it again. <laughs> but it, it, like that's just like random little stuff along those lines that, that's yeah. happening. And it's just crazy to see because, you know, I mean, like we said, roughly maybe a million deaths a year to, to, from coal. Yeah, and in the then, process of coal. And, and the thing there is, might be, I would, and this might be pushing it because I actually don't know the number, but there might be, this might be high, ten thousand casualties in the whole history yeah. of nuclear but, energy. Yeah, and thing is, it was coal, and then it was I think it was methane gas. Yeah, right under. Yeah, it. yeah, it was like coal, methane. Yeah, and then worked in its the, way down. We were talking about and, this, and, like we stopped the documentary and talked like methane gas. I mean, yes, but it's expensive as crap, and, like, so many casualties mm -hmm. has come from just somebody left the stove on yeah. and lit a candle. Mm -hmm. Your house is blowing up. Yeah. No, it is it is pretty wild because, like, that's also how, like, the U.S. has actually cut back on our carbon emissions over the past 20 years. Like, we've kind of hit our goal for what we had. Globally, we haven't, but as a country, we have. And I didn't know this, but the main way we've done that is we've 
gotten off of coal as much, but we've moved to gas because mm-hmm. gas yep. is more efficient. It's less cheaper and it produces less carbon dioxide. Yep. But like they also talked, which I feel like most people, especially very pro climate change, people probably don't recognize. Like we talked you kind of work in that industry in a way like you you see and witness some of the stuff when it comes to that with your job right yeah and it's like methane leaks yeah. it leaks everywhere at these facilities in pipes in yeah. houses all of it so i don't know if you guys know but i'm a i'm an underground locator mm-hmm. for all kinds of crap for usic yeah and i've come i've probably called in five or more houses just because you can smell it like if you smell methane yeah. gas yeah. from a meter you call it gotta, in you gotta immediately it in. yeah immediately i mean even at my my work a couple of weeks ago we had a, a gas leak mm-hmm. and they didn't realize what it was and it was a, our uh, regulator on the building yeah and they smelled it all through yep. the like we evacuated i don't think i told you this because this was before no, you yeah. moved in mm-hmm. we had to leave work early because they were like yeah we got a leak yeah. we don't know where it's it insane. could be under it could be under the concrete it could be a pipe there mm-hmm. and if it is they're going to have to rip stuff up to fix yep. these pipes. Luckily, it was just a regulator, but it was leaking all the way down, and like it was coming up the storm drains, and people could smell it. Oh, shoot. And it was That's leaking all day. And they had called a company to be like, hey, like you guys need to come out and fix this. We we think there's a leak. We had some other guys yeah. out in our well house. Can you come check it out? Turns out they didn't come, and they call back, and they're like, oh, no one told you? Yeah, we're not coming. So they decided to call the fire department and be like, hey, we're pretty sure we got a gas leak. Can you guys get out here? The company wasn't able to come check this yeah. out. And yeah, it, it was like, uh, yeah, that's the stuff we get caught out. At. Yeah. And it's just like insane because like a lot of people just like don't really think of just like how oh, dangerous it can be. It's, it's insane. There's and that's like the, from the seventies and eighties, there's old pipes, all, all sorts of old stuff. school yeah. houses. Like, yeah, I've that heard, makes sense. I've heard so many and seen so many videos because that's what we had to do. Yeah, d- during yeah training yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah, dude, it's it's scary and it's sad. Yeah, how many people have died? It, and then that's the other thing is like they, the industry almost makes methane power plants seem like it's the backbone or the sidekick of green re- renewable energies, yeah. and it's not. And, like, that's the thing. It produces less carbon, but also when methane gets into the atmosphere, which I didn't realize, it's even more insulating than carbon dioxide is. Mm-hmm. It does have a shorter half-life, so it won't stay in the atmosphere as long. But in the short term, it has a larger greenhouse effect than carbon dioxide does. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that. Like, no, that, that no. was something I never so, knew. So, like, another thing is, so, you know, like, the manholes? Yeah. Sometimes we have to go in there. But if there's something that, like we have a, um, oh, I forget what it's called, but it literally tells you the oxygen level. Yeah. Um. So, so basically, lo- if you see it, something that just flies. Yeah. It. Like if it's anything, like you can't go in there. Yeah. Like your oxygen level will, like literally make you pass out. And yeah. if you're stuck in a manhole, then you're kind of, kind of yeah, no screwed. One know, yeah. No one. Kind of. No screwed. one knows you're knocked out. Exactly. There, and you can suffocate and die. Fix it. Yeah. That's. It's just like little stuff. No, nobody realizes. Like, I mean, even on a year-to-year basis, pe- more people die in the solar industry than they do <laughs> yeah. in nuclear. I remember he was talking about yeah. that. <laughs> and, and it's like, and most of that's from solar installations, especially on buildings or houses where people fall off roofs and <laughs> get injured or accidentally yeah. die. Yeah, it's a dumb thing to think about. Yeah, that's but the thing. You never he, think about it. This thing, he's like not against anything. No, he like loves. He, he does love. Yeah, he was just like he, he was just showing sh- straight facts because yeah, me I was pro. It was, it was a very, I was pro wind, pro yeah, solar, same. and I was just like, yeah, if I get a house, I'm definitely gonna. And I still like, plan invest. on it. Yeah, yeah, I still I still plan on doing that, but like you said, like there's a possibility that maybe in 10, 15 years, you could have a nuclear battery that literally powers your home yeah. for twenty five years. Exactly. If you can, and if nothing. they can get like that much research and actually figure out how to do that is that'd be impressive. life would be yeah, because i mean changing. imagine that at that one point at that point i guess with those you might not even necessarily have to be hooked up to the grid no like, like your house could be like, self-sustaining exactly i feel like the grid would honestly just and it, especially the per like the push of evs like electric vehicles and everything mm-hmm. it's something that's going to be necessary yeah because they were even talking about that this was um this is before, like, 
um one of the, that main one blew up the main reactor it was mm-hmm. like the very first one chernobyl or mm-hmm. was it three mile island i forget it it was something like that and then that's when everybody turned against it yeah so they were talking and they were showing like everybody was thinking this is going to be the future and they were showing like the, battery yeah, powered vehicles yeah and everything and once that happened and then everything went it, south it, it, yeah it shut down but i feel industry. like nowadays like if like we have the research we can definitely figure something out yeah and it's not to say that wind and solar isn't great but in their own way they do have pollutants there is a negative consequence to it there is with everything there's not no absolute clean version of anything right. you're gonna you're gonna have something but also wh- when you talk it it's like okay solar is awesome but like he was using the example with germany where they shut off all the reactors and they put in this giant solar farm yeah took up 500 acres and it turns out that there's like one cool. nuclear reactor could produce, produce almost 100 times the energy 24 mm-hmm. 7 with basically because it can work non-stop that's one reason mm-hmm. why and it takes up a fifth of the land yeah to do all this and and i i don't know if it's necessarily cheaper to do that but i mean you can't tell me that to put in four hundred thousand solar panels or whatever it was yeah. was cheap like that was definitely yeah, hundreds cheap. of millions if not a billion dollars probably to do something like that probably in all it was a billion yeah I, I would i would say that but it's insane it really is i feel like see i'm not against solar at all no but like putting it in on land like it just doesn't it just, just doesn't make sense to take up some, thousands of acres when we for have panels. roofs we yeah. do we have roofs uh, we have all these other things that it's there could be other ways yeah, to do it. That's the thing with like turbines. Mm-hmm. Like then, turbines take put it in a place a that makes sense. Of an acre. Yeah, not even that. Maybe, probably. maybe an acre, and that's part of eh. the, the construction and having access. Yeah, I mean it's just a road. <laughs> yeah, that's all exactly. it is. It's literally just road. But like, yeah, the only reason we can kind of talk about that is because <laughs> we in our have county. There's there is there's a solar wind farm. and there's turbines. Yeah, but like. The thing is, it's just like there's so many businesses because like uh, this is what I was talking about. The turbines, they actually paid people to put it on the land. And I know solar would do that, but why don't we just move it towards businesses and put it on the like buildings? It's like yeah, we'll pay you like this much in a a year just to have it on. Yeah, like I mean, they also make make small turbines. Yeah, like, and that's also the thing is I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's been a while and I haven't looked into it, but. Technically, if you have solar panels or if you have turbines set up, let's say, at your house, like small ones, because you can do that. Mm -hmm. If you actually produce excess energy and it pumps onto the grid and you're positive, you will actually receive paychecks from the power companies instead of having to owe anything. Yeah. And because you're helping the grid, you're powering someone else's home slightly Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like even if some people and obviously it doesn't always make sense for everybody to almost be accountable of your own energy but it's like if i had the ability i would 100 percent do it oh yeah and i mean in the future i'm definitely planning of yeah. getting buying a house and at least having solar on it at least sure. solar and if i have land if i have land i put small turbines up <laughs> heck yeah dude i mean th- there's one guy and this was years ago he put one up and it might have been like six eight thousand dollars to build but mm-hmm. it's like within i think five years it basically pays for itself from the, the mm-hmm. energy savings of, right. of all of it. And eventually it's it's a positive on your expenses. Yeah. So, like, there's actually a pastor, you know, in Brown County. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever actually heard of him, but he's a pa- pastor down there, and he actually lives, like, off the grid, everything. Oh. He has solar, he has wind, and he has a creek that he gets water from, too. Yeah. And he just he has no expenses whatsoever. That's pretty, pretty and impressive. And I went to his house, and it's like a two-story, like, actually big house, like, size of our house. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can do it. You can. Yeah. It costs a lot up front, but it's like... In the, in the long in run, the long if you run, save... Worth it. Yeah, as I was gonna say, if you save that much money in the long run, then... It, I mean, insane. even if you have maintenance later on, it's probably still worth it. Oh, 100%. If you look at it over the longevity of 20-plus yep. years, for sure. Yeah. And, well, like, that's one thing, like, speaking of methane and just having renewables not necessarily being enough. The example with Texas, I don't know if you remember this, but two years ago, the Texas grid almost crashed. 
Mm, really? Yeah. So they basically had a weird weather situation, ended up having very bad storms, which is not normal to get a lot of snow in certain parts of Texas. True. But Oh, I think I actually remember this. So one. I think it's like 25 to 50% of their energy. I know that's a big jump, but I don't know. But I'm pretty sure like, a, a very significant chunk of Texas's grid is ran off of renewables between solar and wind. I mean, it makes like, sense. It, it's a large, it makes large sense. amount, and most of the rest, I'm pretty sure, is gas. But because they're not built to handle cold weather, I think it had something to do because the temperature dropped so much that some of the pipes froze and busted yeah. and caused basically a lack of energy producing yeah. and supposedly someone talked that like the grid was within if someone wasn't there to get backup generators and stuff running at the time like the texas grid was within minutes of collapsing Wow! and the whole state would have been without power for who knows how long but even a couple days especially in a weather situation like that would have been terrible like the amount of homes that yeah. had frozen pipes and people without water and electricity mm -hmm. and when that happened was extreme where a lot of people were like, you know what? Well, now it's broken. We got to replace this. Let's make it yeah. where it's more certified for cold temperatures because mm -hmm. they're not used to it. And just in case it happens again, they don't want to be without water or electricity. And yeah. it's like, so it just shows it's like even with wind and solar, it only does so much. And if gas or something has that kind of issue, you're kind of, right. if you got nothing else to re rely right. on. I mean, your gas it heats you, it heats your house but electricity it literally keeps your refrigerator staying cold yeah. like even having no power for two or three days that messes up a whole bunch of crap to mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people no definitely most definitely and even like if the grid went down just the, just think of a walmart apart. for instance oh yeah it's just like it's insane no well, I feel like one of the things that, like, by the end, like, you and me were both sitting there, and we were just like, this is amazing. Like, one, the small nuclear reactors that they were developing for possibly small communities, remote communities. Mm -hmm. But then not only that, but in general, making new, um, what was it, SMI nuclear reactors, small module reactor, or SMR, sorry. SMR, small, yeah. small nuclear reactors, module reactors, sorry, where basically the design is probably a third to a quarter of the yeah. size of the old ones. Yeah. And, and like, take up less space. You yeah, can ship them places. And it, honestly, I was just like looking actually at like the reactors. It kind of looks intimidating just a little yeah. bit. Like, yeah. Especially like, the old designs. Yeah, yeah that's like, what I mean. Well, but I mean, it's have like, you ever, eh, have you ever like, been to some of the coal plants in southern Indiana? No, I haven't. It's kind of the same. Is it I really? mean, they, they have those same stacks. They're oh. massive. You're like, damn. Like, like there's a power plant. <laughs> like, I mean, there's... Yeah. I think five or six coal plants, I think, along the Ohio River because Probably, they yeah. deliver coal on barges. Mm -hmm. That's why they're there. That makes sense, actually. Um, but well, like, yeah, if they when, do they were that, showing, when they're showing the little ones, I was like, that's impressive. Dang. Yeah, it's crazy. It's I mean, obviously, like, you'll still have to have the big facilities, but right, basically, right. it's like when they're doing it, you build the hole in the ground, you can transplant the, the reactor there, mm -hmm. put it in, insert it, hook everything up, and it's ready to go, yeah. It's, which is crazy. It's like you could build it all off site and just transport them anywhere. Well, that's what China was doing. Yeah, that's what they're working on, and yeah. that's what's crazy is they plan on basically being net zero by twenty sixty, and part of it is because they're gonna build like one hundred fifty reactors in the next four years, yeah. which is amazing. I, they did say something like they were making so many at a certain point in time. Mm -hmm. I forget what they said though. It was like they're making a a few reactors like a year or something you know yeah it was some, it was somebody i don't know if, if it was china or it might have been. i'm pretty sure it was china yeah, yeah it, it might have been uh, especially well yeah i mean think about it 40 years to make 150 yeah you, you're, they're gonna be putting up at three or four a year yeah pretty much and that's still insane yeah it's a reactor dude yeah uh, and it's also it's like imagine the amount of jobs that produces yeah. for a great industry locally it's mm -hmm. not that has to be something that's not outsourced to other countries like that's something the country has to be responsible for right. it and supply jobs for and thousands the of training people. that's going to have to go into it that's more jobs yeah, yeah. it opens up like it it'd be very interesting to see but then i feel like the other thing that was so crazy that neither you and me realized like 
once we got to a certain point, we're like, well, this is awesome. Um, it sounds like we need more nuclear reactors. Like, come right. on. Like, who do I need to email? Like, that's like what? what let's put my money in it. I want to put my money. <laughs> yeah. Like, what politician do I e- need to email to be like, you guys need to wake the hell up and start putting in nuclear reactors that's, instead of coal yeah. or all this other bullshit. Go to Joe Biden's front door. <laughs> Just be like, dude, come on. Uh, there's a doorbell outside the White House. I think it's still there. I don't think it really does anything, but you can push it. I've been out there. How the heck do you know this? I've been there. You just ring the doorbell? No, but I, 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 I people talked about it when we were there. Oh, the, you actually been inside though? No, I've never been inside, but oh. I, I've been. I I've been to the White House tour, yeah. because no, I know no, they no. do tours. All yeah, the time. no, I went. I went there in eighth grade. That would be insane. Yeah, there was I, just I've, one dude I've, that I've, just stood there, just like this for yeah. hours. <laughs> just there was, off the there was one time that we went there too. So, but the, I feel like the other thing that was kind of fascinating, and I never thought about, but how they were like depending on where you build these reactors and what you do one of the biggest byproducts of nuclear reactors is a insane amount of excess heat yeah and how they were like if you set up systems properly you could literally use this heat from the reactors to possibly help heat cities Mm -hmm. you could do all these other things you could use it to like in the steel industry to provide heat to work on steel so they don't have to burn as much fuel right. to heat stuff. You, you don't got to do all these other things. Imagine just making, like, beside each other. The, I, like, I mean, honestly, it might in the future, that might be the best bet. It's like, okay, well, this area is zoned out for industrial use. Right. Let's put a power plant here. Let's exactly. put a reactor here. And all of the excess energy, all that excess heat, mm. will funnel into this factory to work insane. on steel milling. Exactly. And it's like it would save one a lot of excess carbon pollution a from steel plants, and a lot of money, and make it simple and easy. Yeah. And but then not only that, but they were like, oh, you could use it for steel. You could use it for fertilizer manufacturing. You could use it for like all these things. Yeah. But I feel like the thing that caught both yours and mine attention was how they were like. When you do this, you also produce an excess amount of hydrogenized water. And if you oh. add carbon to it and do all this stuff, you create a fuel source. And how they were talking about how they could literally, basically, from the byproducts of nuclear reactors, produce basically a clean form of biofuel that could be used for airplanes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It, and I was like, well, I mean, like they said. Energy makes up a third of the carbon emissions. Mm-hmm. It's not all of it. The next largest one is transportation, and that includes everything. Yep. And it's like, imagine if most airplanes started using this biofuel where they're not creating the excess emissions from it. Not saying, I mean, I would think airplanes are probably a giant chunk of that emissions when it comes to transportation. Oh, it, has it has to, to be, be up there. It has to it be at least a third. Be. There's uh, so many planes in the sky. Uh-huh. But it's like imagine if they just change the fuel source and it. I mean, even they, just cuts even if off. they got one third of the fuel, that's uh-huh. jet fuel is expensive. Yeah, it's expensive. It, it's like we could just create it from that. We don't got to go pump oil or on the other side of the world yeah. to do all this, and then let alone all the other causes like the negative side effects of oil, the oil industry. Not mm-hmm. only the emissions, but the pollution, everything the transportation of this fuel globally right. like all this stuff if you cut you basically are cutting out the supply chain like you're cutting out part of the middleman for all this stuff and it's not saying the oil industry is going to disappear because it's not it's just not yeah. you can't everything is made from oil like yeah. plastics every bit of plastic like the amount of stuff in this room even on our microphones yeah. that was made from oil substances and yep. stuff like that is very important. That's not going to go away. Even your so shoes, dude. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to cut out. You're not going to cut out oil. It's yeah. never not going to be a thing. And it, well, not saying that, but not in our lifetimes by any means. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to a certain point, yes, it's probably. It's going to be wrong. Yeah. It's just we could make a big change globally with both energy and so many other industries if they actually focused on nuclear, and that's what's so fascinating. Yeah. Like it was, I the, the the documentary was just filled with so much information. It was like honestly, it was like once I got to the half point, it was just like, yeah, like it was hundred percent. It was a lot. It really was, and I, I would recommend like anybody listening. It, 
I get it if you don't want to necessarily spend money to watch a documentary, but I think it was like $10, and it's so informational. Yeah. And if you don't even want to do that, just go listen to him on a podcast. Go mm-hmm. look into him. There's other people that talk about yeah, it, right. but it's it's probably one of the most fascinating industries that could have major impacts yeah. over the next 50 years yeah. that I, I think hopefully if people open their eyes will will be great for i mean our country but globally for for a lot of people so if they can get this running hopefully can hopefully like in our generation you mm-hmm. know yeah and it, it easily could be if it there was actually be. yes it was if it was pushed and incentivized and government got involved and they backed it mm-hmm. and they, they actually made a system around it to push this plan or a plan for it it could 100 percent happen i mean if china is able to build 40 or in 40 years build 150 we just sent 100 billion dollars to ukraine imagine if we only took half of that and put that into nuclear energy and we built know, 50 more much. reactors like yeah what the hell like imagine I mean, that, that would produce so much energy for the grid mm-hmm. and oh, maybe that would actually cause, because our grids be, being able to produce so much more energy, that we could handle having more electric cars and doing all this stuff. It's like that becomes more of a, a possibility if we change where we're getting our power and are able to produce more. Mm-hmm. And the cheapest, easiest way to do so is through nuclear. Like, Yeah. Until I find something else out. Yeah, yeah, until like fission or not oh, fusion fusion fusion, yeah. fusion becomes Dude. a thing yeah. and it's it's still gotten way more impressive over the past 20 years but it still has a lot of work and it's like okay yeah. it it can't really help us now but maybe by the end of this century it could be the new thing yep. that's able to to replace a lot but until then this is the best option we have and i just don't think a lot of people realize it yeah it is pretty impressive that even he said that I guess there's been polls done, but almost 60% of the younger generation, probably our generation, are actually in support of nuclear energy. Yeah, I mean, that, most of it is the older generations that have those old stigmatisms because they grew up during the 60s, right. 70s. I mean, it makes sense. It does stuff. make sense. So, well, What was sad, though, was seeing, especially when it came to the, the history of it, was like there was a lot of potential. It was growing. Yeah. It was becoming big. It was it, – presidents like eisenhower was pushing it mm-hmm. jfk was pushing it yeah. it was becoming a big thing he uh, i mean I, eisenhower kind of i mean i didn't know this he he kind of pushed nuclear power to hopefully become a thing globally it wasn't mm-hmm. even just for us it was yeah that was that's he went to I'll, the u.n and was like hey we need to do this yeah, and then that's when the vision started going yeah like everybody was like oh my gosh this, this is, is actually yeah this could, this, be, this it. could be it this could be yeah. the thing that unlocks it but then it just went south. It just went south with, and what's sad is it, it's all that, like, a lot of it was the lobbying. All of it was the yeah. negative propaganda that just shut it down in the public's eye. And like we said, that's a good thing. We did we didn't end up like Germany. We didn't shut them off, mm-hmm. but we basically halted any progression over the past like thirty years, at least exactly. probably more. Yep. And, and it's like, damn, we haven't had probably any new reactors really come online in the past thirty years. Yeah. At least it just stopped. It just basically halted the industry from pushing forward because they didn't want to deal with that negative public view. Yeah. But I mean, there, there's a lot of, a lot of potential. A hundred percent. It's fascinating. It is very fascinating. I mean, like what was, I mean, obviously we've gone over a lot, but what do you think was your turning point in it that kind of changed your point of view? Cause I could tell at the start, I was kind of like, I mean, I mean that's just kind of like how the documentary went. It was just like, yes, it was like it's just slow starting, but like mm-hmm. once, I mean, I, I guess I really didn't have a turning point, but just like what what was gradually the first thing that they talked about that kind of like you're like wait a second, like what what kind of started to be like like get your attention to be like oh, oh you're making me think, dude. Um, I mean the main reason I asked was I just I mean you were basically going into it blind so you kind of yeah, got yeah. that almost I mean, ideolo- ideological shift yeah during that slightly i'm trying to think honestly i don't know if i really just had a turning point it, it was, was just, just all of it it was just it was gradually just, yeah so yeah i know yeah i know what you mean and unless that, like i just 
not what I can think of right now. Yeah. I, well, that that was the thing that they were talking about is that it's so like politics, everything is so ideological like based when mm-hmm. it comes to whoever. You're either like if you're super far right, you're like climate change doesn't exist. Fuck it. Nothing's happening. All this right. is all natural. If you're super left, you're like we're gonna die in twenty years. Mm-hmm. Like we're dead. We're yeah. we fucked it. We turned the place into an oven. Yeah. Like, and but then also the people on the left are like nuclear is terrible. It's evil. It's not gonna do anything. Mm-hmm. And a quote that I've heard is like, people talk is you are not your ideas. You are not your thoughts. You can have these thoughts. You can have these ideas. Hmm. But that is not who you are. Too many people nowadays. I've never heard that. Put themselves in the ideas and thoughts that they get from other people and they create their personality around those problems when it comes to especially like super left when it comes to green energy all these things it's not just for them it's not just a movement like it becomes who they are Mm -hmm. and it's like you're not that you you're that's not you these are just ideas that you envelop into yourself right you're not that guy pal Trust no, me. no, it's like so, and I feel like that's why so many people can be so, I guess, harsh against it is because they see it as an attack almost on themselves, and that's why there's a yeah. challenge to try changing people's point of views of it. Yeah, I mean, it just gets to a point everybody just like kind of cocky in a way, mm-hmm. or like, I'm right, you're wrong, dude. Yeah, and but it's not. I that mean, easy. it is not easy to turn them, but once you do, then they're like, oh crap, I was in the wrong. Yeah, like, I wouldn't say, like, when I first learned some of this information, and it was not as much as even what I consumed last night as we watched that, but it was just some. I was never, I I don't think I was ever against nuclear power. I just don't feel like I ever really thought about it. Like, I I knew about the accidents. I knew about all these things, but I never was like, it's bad. I never thought it was necessarily good either. Like, I didn't think it was that impressive. I didn't think there was that much upside to it either it's just like there's i always, was just like yeah it's a power plant i feel like just like right now there's just like a green maybe like a red and like nuclear is like in the grayish area yeah Pe- people look at it as the danger but yeah. in all reality it's really yeah. not. it's just i mean i'm definitely more on the side now that's good yeah i mean it's just still just new to me like if somebody like like, let's say we had a tour or something. Is that what taught me? I would be like, what does that name mean? Because half the names I don't even, like, know. Yeah. It's like, just... Well, what, what was it he was saying? He was saying that there was... There was some accident, and I think this might have been with Fukushima, that it produced... Tr- tr- Trinonite? No, something. Some re- radioactive water. Like, it's a certain compound that ends up in water, all this stuff. He's like, you can drink a, a gallon of this radioactive water and you will be fine. Like, your body doesn't absorb that radiation. Your body heals itself from that stuff because naturally you are you are around radiation daily. Like, the sun gives off a lot of radiation. Yeah. That's why you get sunburned. Like, yeah. it, is radio, it, it is radiation. That's, yeah. that's what that is. Yeah. And, and same with, like, we talk, dentists, all these things. Like, you're around it. Your body naturally does have biological mechanisms to combat any decay the oh okay so this just popped in my head that i I didn't even think about the thing that i did find super interesting that i did not know and shocked me was um how they did studies and watched the offsprings of people that were involved Mm -hmm. with i almost said hiroshima not that one um my brain just shut off. Uh, Which one are you talking about? Chernobyl. Yeah. Oh, Chernobyl. And how they watched them for basically negative birth defects, like all, all these mm-hmm. different things. There's none. That was shocking. Yeah. I was like, that is always something you kind of hear. And I don't know if that's, or maybe I didn't even hear it, but maybe it's from like even movies, comic book, like that. Yeah. Gets I've definitely put seen in your like, head. like that's what I was like. TV shows. Yeah. From that something, something along those yeah. lines. Yeah that's what you just for some reason think even though you really have no basis for it and it turns out like all these people that were exposed during during that tragedy and during that yeah 
the whole situation that was exposed to radiation they literally watched these people like we're testing your kids to see what might happen yeah and they didn't were, just do were, it on what, humans there wasn't either. they did it on animals too yeah like there might be some stuff with animals that live there but there i i also know that um like yes theory they've been to chernobyl they visited it oh really and there's this old lady that's lived there since she's like i ain't moving like she went back like two years after it happened she's like i'm going home <laughs> screw this and she's lived on her own she's lived within like 20 miles of the like ground zero and just That's grown, grown cool. her own food made her own liquor like she made homemade like yeah. alcohol was serving it to him she feeds people that come and visit like she like personnel. herself yeah she just lives out there and she's i mean i don't know if she's necessarily been medically tested but she's lived there i mean if she's alive she's alive years, like yeah. 60 years in the containment zone and I mean, she was growing foods. It, too. She made it sixty years. That's it, in itself is impressive enough. As she develops cancer, at that point, I'm fe- I still feel like that's almost like a good job. I guess, like, I mean, you made it sixty years living there. I'll live sixty. Like, years. she's like eighty. Like, she's an old. Like, she is yeah. a what? What is a Russian grandma called? A, a babushka. She is a babushka. She just lives on her own. She, she does her thing. Like, and it's like what the hell? Like, impressive as shit. Like, I, I mean, yeah. I would, I would never have suspected that, and it just kind of shows that. Obviously, high levels of radiation, especially the stuff that was involved and in ground nuclear zero warfare. Too, you know? But it's like, it's not like she's standing next to the reactor. <laughs> you know, like she's not going there to be like touching the, the elephant foot, which is what part of that was called. I don't know if you knew that. Um, oh, that would be kind of cool to go there. Though. Yeah, you can. You can visit it. I mean, yeah, of course. Maybe not now. It's a war zone. But <sighs> yeah, true. <I'm> just... <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like. Okay, so like there is something to it. Like it's just not gonna. You're not just gonna drop dead from yeah. it, which is kind of wild because I feel like that's what kind of gets shown in movies and all these different yeah. things. I mean, like they talked about um the HBO documentary, like that was, or movie that came out about Chernobyl. And they were talking about uh-huh. how like that was like super fictionized and how they made like the scientists look like they didn't know what they're doing and this was oh, all yeah, like strapped right. together and they literally talked to a guy that was there he was part of the containment the watch the cleanup after crew, everything right? everything he like, was, he was in charge of all too? the oh well, I don't know if he was in it but he was involved of dealing yeah. with the catastrophe yeah and he's like no they just did a very terrible experiment and it caused yeah. this well disaster. he was saying because it was like on a low side mm. The government, did the government know? Well, they hid it for a while. Yeah, they hid it from, like, everybody. Yeah, globally. And they said, like, if they actually knew what they were doing, they would shut it down immediately. Yeah. Yeah, so. well, yeah, like he said, it was the people at the facilities that were doing this. He's like, if the yeah. higher-ups in the government and higher physicists that worked in the government knew what was happening, they would have shut it down yeah. instantly. Mm-hmm. But if they decided to do whatever test, I don't totally know what it was, do some experiment, and it caused the reactor to explode. Like yeah. it wasn't, it wasn't that it was a faulty reactor necessarily. It was just that malfunctions. People messed just it up. people not did not know what they were doing. Literally. Yeah, I mean even that, or they even mentioned another movie that was made after Fukushima, yeah. and it was like making it seem like this was a terrible disaster that caused devastation mm-hmm. to all these people. And in all reality, there's the a tsunami part, that. <laughs> yeah, the the part from the nuclear reactor like that part of the yeah. whole the like, disaster yeah. really didn't contribute i mean that's a that's another thing like the tsunami is going to go first no matter what so yeah. i mean it, i mean of course and even then it was only like what they say there was was it four reactors that were basically in line with the tsunami mm-hmm. like the tsunami hit the coast something like that that was just ha- that happened to be the only one that got yeah. affected and it caused a yeah. major issue but because of that and because of the backlash japan shut down i think like seven to ten mm-hmm. nuclear reactors and now yeah. they rely more on coal and gas and it's like you yep. guys went backwards like, yeah you took two steps back like you guys were were on your way you were doing yep. fine because of one industry issue it went backwards and that was another thing like Obviously, we, we talked about 
the differences and casualties between the coal industry and, and, and nuclear. But when it comes to even industrial accidents, they were showing examples of other ones. And what was that one in India where it was some gas? Uh, it, uh, what was, it was some factory. I can't remember what it was for, but it was some chemical factory that exploded and it killed what they say it was like 20,000 people or something ridiculous mm. but it caused severe harm to like a million because the chemicals ended up in the air and spread didn't it spread in the water too yeah it was something yeah, it was something i, I can't remember what kind of factory it was but it ended up hurting killing causing oh, yeah. 10 times more than yeah. than uh chernobyl and then like the even talking about like hydropower it's great but and it, it is very, very, very efficient when it comes to renewables, but it has a very large impact on the environment as around. Like you're yeah. possibly flood, you're flooding areas, you're oh, yeah. cutting off supply lines when it comes to water, oh, yeah. you're changing ecosystems. You might have to move a lot of people from their homes. Like I think mm-hmm. like the Three Gorges Dam or whatever it is in uh, China, like this is literally the world's largest dam. It's a mile long. That's how big it is. They had to displace, I think, almost 200 plus thousand people because once this was built, that water's just going to fill up there. Yeah. Like, that's sorry, you got to move. Yeah. But they talked about a dam collapsing. And oh, they what did. was it? The 1900s. I can't remember what year, but what it killed. It, it, I, I swear it, they said it killed like 100,000 people or something ridiculous. I want to say it wanted to it was, it was a lot. It was ridiculous and it's like oof. like imagine like a, if a, a large dam just i was gonna say collapsed. a big dam yeah it would it would like it would. yeah i feel like that that situation there's nothing you can do to basically stop that like once it happens there's nothing you can do right. to help those people it's done like yeah. where i feel like at least with let's say a nuclear reactor meltdown there are things you can do to mitigate the effects for people. You can evacuate. You have mm-hmm. time. You can test people. You can do all these yeah. things to basically try to prevent any excess injuries. Right. But a dam collapses. There's no stopping it. Right. It's, it's happening. So uh, it's it just I, I like that he showed a lot of different points of views, and obviously it, mm-hmm. he wasn't necessarily negative against renewables. Like he he does love those, but right. he, he thinks that. The biggest backbone we need is is nuclear power, oh. which I would say at this point I I definitely agree. Yeah, like what we said, we were like, should we go build a reactor? Can we do that? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Yeah, yeah, in the like, backyard. Yeah, we'll just build a small reactor in the backyard. We don't want to pay electric anymore. <laughs> YouTube, we can we can figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get the uranium, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, right. But I feel like it was, it was very informational. It was. It was informative documentary. Um, I, I do advise people to watch it. Definitely. And if, it, if you don't want to watch an hour and forty five minutes of just a documentary, just skip it halfway through. You will learn still. Yeah. Half like, seventy five percent more than you probably know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. There's, it was so information packed. We probably missed a lot. I feel like we did. We did cover a lot, but yeah. there was there was so much to it. It was. It was it was very informative. It was a late night. I felt like we both were tired too. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean that that was the good thing that I did like that he did was he in the beginning, like it, the first part was all about history and he went back to when we discovered radioactivity yeah. with Ma- Madame Curie. And mm-hmm. and he started from the absolute beginning and yeah. worked his way up. Um, I did kind of like that. Well, he he kind of did a who was it? full backstory. That guy was an immigrant too, you know. Who? Um. What's his name? He um he was doing it and he did it on the sh- uh the the ships. Oh um. Oh, I forget his name. But yeah, he was an immigrant and he uh, like yeah he was a he was a Jewish man that ended yeah, up in the like U.S. Navy. Yeah, and, then, and basically um, he was the he one. was a commander. Yeah, he he ended up, I think, becoming like an admiral or general. Yeah, like because but, he even told like the governor, he's like, "Yeah, I'm actually an immigrant. You guys can do whatever you want." But like, they started like looking into his history. Like, you figured out stuff we didn't even know existed. You're you're fine. 
Are we thinking of the same guy? I think so. The guy that was in the Navy that basically built the nuclear sub program. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, he was he was really the first person, basically globally, to push nuclear energy. Obviously, yeah. it was for war, but he was the first one to be like, this is a possibility. Mm-hmm. I designed this. Let's do it. And yeah. he created, six, was it 50 or 60 plus nuclear powered subs? And I'm pretty sure most of those are still in use today. Like, I bet they probably have built more. I, well, I don't know. He was kind of the head honcho on it. He was the one that pushed for it, and they did it within years. Like, the, he basically was like, "We're doing this, yeah. and we're making a lot of them." And they did. And because, yeah. like, I also didn't know that the first ever actual nuclear power plant was built in Russia. I didn't know that at all. I didn't know the I first official that. one was opened in yeah. Russia, and then, and then after that, we were like, "Oh, so there is a way to do this." <laughs> Because, yeah. like, at the time, they like, other people from around the world, U.S., presidents, politicians, engineers were all like, well, let's go take a look at this. And at the time, they were like, that one of the reasons why, uh, especially U.S. military was involved, because this was still around the time of the Cold War. Mm-hmm. They're like, Can we, is this used for anything uh, related to war? Let's go check it out. And it's like, no, this yeah. is just producing power for our country. And they're like, oh. Well, damn. All I can right, ima- cool. I, I can imagine people were like, "Yeah, what are you yeah. doing over here? Mm. Nu- nuclear what? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that word. What are yeah, you yeah. There, there's a lot of context to that word over the past twenty years. We locked, launched the first bombs. What are you uh, talking about with this? <laughs> yeah. That. And so it was very informative documentary. If you guys are interested, yeah, a lot of people have Amazon Prime. Go get it. Yeah. Put it on your Prime card. Why not? Like it's ten bucks. What? Watch it. Or if not. Listen to his, the podcast with him, mm-hmm. and and even then you get a pretty good breakdown over a, a lot of it, and yeah. very informative. I think it's going to be a very interesting industry to watch over the next fifty years, basically mm-hmm. the rest of our lives, oh, to yeah. kind of see how this progresses. But I feel like it's probably the best solution we have right now it's to a, to a lot of yeah. a lot of I challenges. Mean, my only skep- being skeptical mm-hmm. is just like. If let's just say China does build all these, but they miss like one little detail, those all blow up. That's the only thing I have skeptical. But I mean, true. As for now, I mean, heck yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm all. I mean, the thing is though, even when it comes to that, like when they blow up, that was another thing that was propagandized. I don't know if that's a word. In the eighties, was they said when that happens. It blows up like a nuclear bomb. Right, yeah. It does. That's what I mean. It's a regular yeah. industry, uh, industrial yeah, accident that's what, explosion. See, that's what I was told my whole yeah, life. Like, so. Yeah, but, you're going to have an explosion, but I mean, it's, not, not, a, it's them, not a bomb. The it's not thing a bomb. is, them making it smaller is probably going to be a smaller blast if yeah, it blows up. That's so. true, too. That, that, that Actually, yeah, that, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, like they were literally talking about how the, the, even China like had their original design that they've been able to basically create this new SMR mm-hmm. and and they were able to design one that's like a quarter the size mm-hmm. take up less space yeah and something that's a lot easier to produce you don't got to build a shit ton of gi- giant and just pipes ship around, and all this stuff know, just... yeah they could build it in a shipyard and send it on its way and go from there and, it, and that I'm was saying. one of the things that he's like there's now a possibility if you standardize it into these smr designs i mean it can basically be like an assembly line similar to like the jetliner industry mm-hmm. and just pump out reactors which is a factory you know they, they just need the incentive someone needs to realize that there is a lot of potential and what the, 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 the there is a lot of money in this industry i mean that's what yeah. that's what's put that that is the main thing that pushes industry even in the negative aspects of corruption it's it's money mm-hmm. and money is everything really and there's a lot of potential in this and yeah okay you're not gonna make money when it comes to getting the resources to produce the fuel because that in the end it's very right. cheap but when it comes to everything else there's so much potential for the industry when it mm-hmm. comes to creating these building these structures right. creating the reactors that leading it, up to what it actually can do yeah and then so. how it will affect other industries mm-hmm. like we talked like electric cars heating yep. 
steel industries yep. creating the the fuels for the planes yeah. like there's there's so much potential it's not just potential. planes either it's just like it, it can be anything everything it could be it's everything insane. but it's like imagine if that just went to planes first and it was like imagine, no like, plane commit uh, imagine commits. gas actually going down that would be nice yeah I'm, well i mean think about it if you also took it, 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 even if let's say it only went into the air air industry and that became the standardized fuel used by airlines throughout mm-hmm. the, the United States, it would lower the demand for oil that would then substantially also lower the cost of regular gasoline for people because not as much oil is going to the aviation industry. Yeah. It would be able to be used for everything else. Yeah. I mean, so basically yes, by doing that, that would cause overall cost of in general electricity, but even fuel to go down. Hopefully, unless, it would it would, it would unless, have it would have an effect on the entire. Unless oil is not pumping in all that money, and they do need the money to keep operating. Do, yeah, it doesn't mean they would actually drop the prices, but it would make sense because. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, yes. So I can see both sides. Yeah, so. exactly. If they wanted to, they could keep it up. But at the yeah. same time, if they did that, it, it, if you actually work it out, technically, it should go down. It should. It, it yes. should. But I mean, and society, you never know. Yeah, capitalism has its benefits, but it can also be a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's amazing, and it produces a lot of crazy things and innovations, but it also uh, can cause people to slow industries because it, they don't see the benefits. Yeah, that, that's that that's a bad thing. But it yeah. will be it'll, it will definitely be interesting to watch. Uh, the, we were sitting there last night, and both you and me were like. What are some of these companies? I want to buy some stocks. Like, I was about to say, dude. Because <laughs> there, there's some potential. Five or six years, it starts boosting up. I'm making my money. <laughs> yeah. Like, shit, I'll work for you guys. Like, I don't. It seems dude. really cool. If there was something like that local, I'd 100% be interested because I'm, yeah. I'm honestly kind of satisfied. Or satisfied? Fascinated with it. Satisfied. Hey. <laughs> I'm satisfied with it. I'm so satisfied. No, I've, I've, I'm fascinated with with it all. I'm fascinated yeah. with that I'll, kind of stuff. I would love to actually know how everything for would work. Oh yeah, that'd be amazing. Like just, that, I mean, just I'm even not to a, sit there and watch. I'm like, no, you guys sci- do I'm no scientist now. already. No, like, but, but at but the like, same time, I'd be like, "Wow, like this is crazy!" This like what you guys are talking about um, and laying out just, on the table. I'd be like, "I'm fascinated." I'm just, backing you guys. Just thinking of how anything works, it's just absurd. Just absurd. It is. Well, I think that's gonna call us for this week's episode. I hope we we're actually able to teach you guys something. This was technically our first real structured episode. I know, dude. In oh my gosh, in a while, a long time <laughs> since Thanksgiving. Pretty much, actually, yeah, I, true. Our Thanksgiving episode, we, we we did actually put some effort into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a good we thing did to like, say. But wait, did we do two in one day? We well, did yeah, two episodes yeah, in yeah. one day. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, they didn't know at the time, but yeah, we recorded two episodes yep. in one day. But no, I, I hope you guys did enjoy. I know I learned something in this process, and I, I hope too. you guys did too. I did. And it was it was definitely a very intriguing, um, just intriguing thing to learn about. Like I I wasn't expecting yeah. so much, but I hope you guys did enjoy. If you haven't already, be sure to hit S- that subscribe button. Slap that subscribe button. Slap it. We we need a good slap on that. You know, <laughs> click that bell icon. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I can't do this while looking at you. So I'll, I'll just no, no. I'll, okay, I'll look at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. If you found this uh, entertaining or informational, uh, if you guys want more, we're gonna be here every week. Um, hit the like button. We uh, every bit is supported. And if you haven't, if you guys aren't always on YouTube. Check out our Spotify. Yeah. Go over there. Check it out. If you don't, if you don't need the videos, go to Spotify. Listen to it on the background on your drive to work. You know, yeah. anything along those lines. But Comment down below what you learned. Yeah, you yeah. If you found any of this interesting, let us know your thoughts. Yeah. And uh, we got we, we guys. We will see you guys all next week. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Peace out, guys.